Okay. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. How's everyone doing this Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on where you are? Back on the V or the V two point four, the green V two point four build. So what is that? YouTube is telling me I'm live. Perfect. I appreciate it. How are folks? Hey, Anki said, and Great White, and Doom, and Truck Guy. Hey, Simon. Hey, Brent. Hey, Pex Peppers. Hey, Kittrell, and Steve, and Jason, and Bill. Not as tall as Yuri, so I still have to use Yuri mode sometimes. Hey, Derek. Hey, Tuxedo. Hey, Elf. Hey, Victor. Hey, Kenneth, and Joel. Hey, Vitaly. How are you? Um, Don't Knock It, and DXR3, and Macboy. How are folks? Coda, John, Subnormal, Deanna, James, Aaron. Whew. It's been a busy, busy bit. Slowly, maybe starting to get a little progress on stuff. So, hey, Gideon, what's this week's hobby? What is this week's hobby? Bearded Bucket and Arthur and Elmas. Um, yesterday we worked on the Milo. Was anybody here for that? <laughs> hey, Dark. Hey, Moose. Um, I made some other little tweaks to stuff um, after stream yesterday because I showed off this little pulley thing that I made, right? So I made this pulley. And I'm pretty proud of it. I like it. The thing is that it uses an expensive $10 GT2-3 it's a three millimeter pitch pulley, um, but it has a clamping mechanism, so it doesn't scar up your lead screw. So I did mean Sunday. It's not yesterday. I missed a whole day. You're right. <laughs> You're right. It, it was Sunday. It was two days ago. I was on airplanes all, all day. Wow. Um, so yeah, I was pretty proud of this, but there was some comments and it's very justified that that is a $10 pulley. That's a little expensive. Um, so I changed it. I printed it. Now, this is second revision of the printed version, but it works. The first revision had every tooth modeled, and I realized I didn't need that. So I took out every other tooth, and I did the same thing here. Modified this, so the metal one will still fit, but the... This one fits in here. And then if you really wanted it to be stronger, you could acetone weld this. And then four screws go in there and hold it together. And it holds it together really well. And then this clamps around your lead screw and it works good. I watched Dave Miller's breakfast plate mounts this afternoon. I saw that. I need to re I need to watch that. I saw that he was doing that. So uh, Dave, one of the Milo developers, was demonstrating um, my, milling some aluminum, and on a stream today. And I'm gonna want to re watch. I'm, I'm gonna want to watch that. It was during a time when I couldn't watch. Um, so anyway, I know just talking about this a little bit. This works by. If you see there, so this little area that's swept between this notch and the, the slot here, there's a 0.2 millimeter gap up here at the top that breaks when you tighten this. So it actually is a proper clamp there. Um, and then along the outside, it's, it's solid, so you don't see it from the outside. But it snaps that layer right there because it's only one, one little bit, and then it will clamp. Yeah, so, but this, the, the idea here, and I tested it, it seems strong. Um, I think I'm gonna just use these. I'm not even gonna use this one. I'm gonna see how long this lasts, but the idea that this is easy, it looks cool, and I'll publish this. So, and there's even, even a little installing aid. So you put this on here, and then you can be sure that when you tighten those screws in, you're not gonna shift, it's not gonna shift on you. So you tighten that up and install those screws and there you go. <laughs> hey, 
Hey BBs, hey PF Dennis. Have to get all the parts that aren't in the kit for Milo. What's the ballpark on price for a completed one? I'm not sure, Brent, because I don't know what the one with or without the, I know without a spindle, it's, it's about a thousand dollars in the US for the Milo kit. But I don't know what it takes to add a spindle, two or three hundred dollars. And then, but then the, the ones that are gonna start coming with the spindle, what are those gonna cost? Hey Rod, hey B, B, B McNichol, a tuxedo. The color at red filmer looks a lot like Spectrum Dragon Red ABS, but without the sparkles. Yeah, this is this has sparkles and it's um, Fusion dwar Red Dwarf. Which channel was that video on? Did you put a heat set for that screw to grab onto, or will it not be sufficient? When I release this, um, it will. There will be two versions. This one uses a heat set, um, but I'm gonna make a, a spot there for a hex nut. So if someone didn't want to put a heat set in, it's optional. Cost will run in a $1,500 range. Yeah. Which, let's see, did I miss anything else? Nothing but the best for the working class. After you get all the parts. Couldn't you mill one later if you really wanted to? Maybe, but for, for what this is, and and what you what it's used for, I think this is going to be just fine. Hey, M4D Mike. So now your parts getting expensive when you order printer parts on layovers. <laughs> okay, this printer. What did I do? We have we have a printer. Let me move this a little closer, and we'll start talking about what where we're at. So last stream we got all this set up. But then between streams, I went through and did some extra time lining up the gantry and the rails and everything is locked headed now. So this is the common anomaly X ex, um, extrusion replacement um, with the titanium backer and it is installed. I have brand new um, gates uh, pulleys on here. I got those from KB3D Got a few extras for other printers too. And um, yeah, and it moves smooth. I was actually playing with my um, dial test indicator running around along here um, on both sides until they're basically perfect. And then I used the, the gantry to make sure they're parallel front to back. So what we need to do today is do things like install the the other backers and um, belt it up and install the Vitali cap setup. Hey DJ, are you going to install G2? Yes. So we assembled G2 on the first stream. So that is the extruder that's going to go on here, along with a Revo but we're gonna use a high flow obsidian and we'll probably just go straight to a 0.6 nozzle, this guy here. So, um, yeah, we're gonna do that. We are going to be running the Leviathan and Nighthawk in an umbilical setup. So I have umbilical printed parts. This is an optional part in the Galileo 2 uh, repository. And then the part for the A back here is in um, Heart K's um, mods GitHub. So what we <clears throat> what we need to get into is I think I wanna just install these backers to get them on here. And then we'll start working towards um, getting Vitaly on and the steppers on the back and, and, um, and belting it. So. You need a higher preload X rail to work with the light gantry. Um, I don't know. This is an early um, honey badger rail from Fabrico. I've had it for a very long time. Um, I cleaned it, completely cleaned it and greased it. So it um, it's running pretty smooth. It was kind of stiff before, uh, even though it had quite a number of hours on it, but it's running really nice now. One thing to note 
is I was cleaning and some of the some of the suggestions and I and I I've tried this in the past and didn't really like it but decided to try it again was using my sonic cleaner to clean the the rails and I think I'm on the fence or not on the fence but I'm on the side of not suggesting that and let me show you a couple of reasons why if I can find them there's one so I cleaned one of the Y rails, Y um, carriages. I took it off the rail and I put it in my sonic cleaner for 25 minutes. And I pulled it out, dried it off real quick and greased it and it turned out great. No problem. Um, I did the second one and forgot it in there for only two hours and it rusted like crazy. If I take this out, if I took this out, you see the actual orange rust inside and the bearings were rusted. If you accidentally forget it in there, it's a bad idea. So, and on top of that, I had, um, someone had said, I think it was Sandy was saying that she saw that someone was looking at the ball bearings on these under a microscope when you run them through a sonic cleaner and you get little pits on them from the vibrations. So I, I, I think I'd lean towards, cause that's seems reasonable to me that that would happen. I think I'd re lean towards not cleaning these in a, in a, um, in a sonic cleaner. So I would probably clean them manually. And um, my cleaning solution was IPA because it was working. In the 20 minutes this was in, it got completely clean. Um, I know you can use like Simple Green or something like that as a degreaser as well. Um, I, I have used Simple Green in the past on LMU bearings, and I'd forgotten about this when I did this, but I had a similar thing where it came out rusted. So, but I had forgotten about that when I was doing this. So this was kind of a reminder, and I think I'm, I'm turned off from using the Sonic Cleaner for cleaning these um, these things. I just use IPA for this, for the one, for this and the one that was rusted, but that is my experience there. <laughs> it's not too bad if you get everything lined up and maybe some little towels or something, you can pull these carriages completely apart and clean them out um, probably in less time than the 20 minutes it took to clean it in the, in the sonic cleaner anyway. So. Elliot, what cable gland are you planning on using? I got what I, how it doesn't work in the PG7 gland I ordered. Well, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm planning on using these PG7 glands right here because I have it. If we run into a problem, then I might try something else. Is that G2E? It is. It is. You're gonna use end stops or sensorless homing? Sensorless homing. Um, if anyone tries using brake cleaner, make sure you use the chlorine free. Ooh. I know the fire hazard part. So to do, so just a uh, quick, and this will help. <laughs> when I cleaned the first one, this was clear when it was done or nearly clear. This is, this is the solution from the, from the second one, all that rust in there. Um, but yes, I put the IPA in here and then put the carriage in here and then submerge this in water in the, um, in the sonic cleaner. So this is um, contained, so. So no, no open, no open IPA heating up in a, in a sonic cleaner. <laughs> It rusted in the IPA. It did. Yep. It, it, when I took it out, when I took it out, it looked like that wherever I put it. When I took it out, it looked worse than this. I've, I've, I've wiped this off to see if it would just rub off. But this was a brand new looking um, rail. Hey, Oscar. 
It was 99% IPA. Yep. Yep. Okay, we are going to just kind of bounce around on this and I think, hope that I can get to all of the, um, all the spots here. So if I, if I zoom in here, there we go. So if you can see, there is a bit of a T-nut sticking out here. I'm hoping if I push that all the way there, I can get the, I can get to the hole here and then the one on the other side, but we'll see. Wanted a kit while I was working, they sold out in the normal vendors. Soak the carriages in plain motor oil, the rust should all disappear in a week. But the problem is, is that rust is now, the bearings themselves are rusted. So I would imagine that they're pitted as well. Um, I'm hoping that I can actually get to both of those. Otherwise, we might have to figure out if I can re swap around a, a T-nut in here. I might be able to do it without, um, without removing things. We shall see. So, what are these? These are going to be some flathead some flathead screws and probably like some M three by sixes. So that's the wrong side. So this one has some, this side has the, for the cable chain. I'm gonna put this right here. What about replacing the bearings with ceramic balls? Um, sure. But at this point that rail's not worth saving. The, the cool thing is I had exact same, same date code, extra rails. So I just grabbed an extra rail um, from the same, from the same batch from LDO and put it in there. Okay, this, let's see if these are gonna go in here, if they're gonna be a pain, a little bit of a pain. Hey Buddha. Okay. Now we're going to see if I can get both of these on here. Or, or if I have to deal with the T-nuts on the end here. Ah, screwdriver is too long. Um, do I have anything shorter? Does it become a rail for a heat insert tool? Oh, it could. You're good call. Good call. I can find some low, low load use for it. That way it doesn't have to just totally just go in the, in the bin. Is that the correct one? Ooh. Sweet looking printer. I have a green trident to build. Nice. Why don't I have the... Oh, there it is. Okay. I know I could move the whole gantry down as well, but. Oh, it's just going to fit. It's just going to fit. I probably need. Yeah, let's go with the next size up on these screws. In three by eight in three by eight flathead what i'm going to use here but that makes me happy i don't have to i don't have to go into replace or removing those those t-nuts on the end build a properly engineered heat insert press with that bad rail properly engineered what do you mean um i'm looking at doing the cnc gantry mounts for my trident build is there any advantage to also going with the cnc stepper mounts other than matching um advantage would be isn't going to be impacted by um any potential ah stepper heat oh what is the part being added 
Hey, Bob. Hey, Maker Viking. Hey, Sean. You ever measured the heat deflection with and without the backers? I assume they are for heat deflection. They are for, yes. So they are for as the, as the, the gantry heats up, the, to counter the differing expansion rates of an aluminum rail versus a steel rail, the sandwiching it with this top rail is supposed to keep this more straight. So this is a, this was introduced by uh, Wapping Puckard. Oh, I put those, I put the end ones on to test it, but I'm not ready to actually put it, put it on because I got to put the rest of the T-nuts in. <laughs> gotta put the rest of the T-nuts in. I was just doing that to, to make sure I didn't have to move these. I'm losing, losing my screws and apparently my marbles. Oh, well. That one's going to be found by the broom later. Okay, let's get back into this. Let's put in... Let's put them in for everyone. And then I'm going to have to find... I've got a mixture in here, and I think I've mixed them up of... Uh, see, that one went in finger pressure. So I think I'm just going to have to go in and find the ones that go in easy and skip the ones that don't. I've got a mixture of them in my little bin here. Bimetallic strips, essentially, yep. I didn't say that was a stainless rail, sir guy. How many are there? One, two, three, four, four on each side. Gotta make sure I'm putting this in right. Might as well use the lightest T nuts. Preloaded ones are unnecessarily heavy. Um, sure, but this is the the Y rail. Um, I should just use I should just use these. Um, but I've already started this so. It would have been quicker. I wouldn't have to be searching through my through my thing here for them. You're right, but I mean it is the why. It's not. It's moving up and down. So weight here isn't as big of a concern. Hey, Brian. I'm just gonna, just gonna force some of these in, even if they're tight. I'll, I'll deal with that later. Oh, well, <laughs> that, that was a mistake because that one doesn't even move. Why did that lock itself in so much? Wow. I think that's right where it needs to be though. Very close to it anyway. Oops, sorry about the focus. I think I got lucky with that. That one's too tight. There's a certain look to the ones that seem to fit better. Hey, man of the crock. Does your special edition of those titanium backers also have those pre-tapped holes for the chains? Yeah. That would go right there. But it doesn't matter because I'm not running, I'm not running chains on here. There we go. That one went in by hand. See, I've got very much a mixture. I got quite a few of them. Um, over time of these of the T-nuts here, and I made the mistake of putting them all in one, putting them all in one thing. Let's put this on. I 
tornado sirens. Wow. Empathetic Puma. I wonder if you're putting all the nuts into the top. No, it makes sense. Oh, hey, Max. How are you? Yeah, so these are the backers that John made me um, <laughs> and gave me at Murph 22. So I am severely deficient in, in installing them. Oh. What's going on? And if nothing else, they look super cool. Okay, now I'm gonna grab this guy, I think. Start from the middle and do a nice firm tightening. Hey Steven, thanks for becoming a member. We are giving away a roll of Polymaker filament today. We will do that at the two hour mark, which is an hour and a half from now. Link is in the pin post and the description. You gotta be here, but it'll be at the 7 p.m. my time is when we'll give it away. Am I planning on hitting Murph this year? Probably. There is a high density of events in June and in the September, October timeframe. So it's going to be interesting what events I can manage to get to or not. The plan is to, um, is to do that, is to get to them, but I'm going to try something. I'm going to, sometimes these, sometimes these rails can be tighter on one spot than others. The extrusions, I mean. So if one went in well on the end, I'm just going to try it there. We use something like 250 milliliters IPA detergent, the rest is distilled water, general container. There we go, two. It's probably not gonna fit. Might. Yep. And two. Peanuts are so frustrating. I should have taken the, realize that I can use hammerheads for this. There we go. There's half of them. Oops, there's one. Not that one. That one's close enough. Two. Nope. 
too bad. Disappointing your signature on my printer is still holding up. Nice. No more for me, Rocky Mountain only this year. Yeah. So we will absolutely, absolutely be at Rocky Mountain. No doubt. There we go. <laughs> one of those three fit. I just got one more to find. I just got back from Korea yesterday. Nice. Had to live Monday twice. Okay, there. Okay, so the end ones we know go all the way to the end. And then this goes this way. And right about there. There, there. Hail. Oh yeah, tornado warning. What state are you in? Which CNC tap is that? That is the Vitali. I will show a link. I'll post a link when we get to when we get to that. Um, I've got the GitHub up on a, a page right now. This one is closer. I'm hoping I can Catch it. Yeah, we can make it. We can make it work. I'm sure the rest of these are lined up. There we go. I'm still at work, 12 hour shifts, you. I had eight hours of training today. Performance management training. So like the stream time, it's 11.30 where I am. It's the super early Monday morning time of the Sunday stream. Yeah, there's definitely a different segments of the world I capture by having the two stream times for good and bad. These railbackers are titanium with an awesome custom um, splash anodized pattern that Whopping Pockard did at my color request. Bob, thanks for the gift of memberships. By me. Hey, Collie. These end ones are a little tight as far as the spacing on the T nuts, but there we are. Yeah. They don't need to be, I guess those could be a little bit tighter. Those are good. Thanks, Shane. We have backers. And then see that. Send all all the things. Not just trying to get the colors. Do backers make sense on the 250? I mean, I have these on two printers. They're really cool, and they probably technically make a difference. Whether you will see it or not, that's a good question.
but you can't you can't deny how cool they look. <laughs> okay, we have so what what I took off of this printer. We remember we were talking about the old one amp 0.9 degree LDO motors that ended up getting replaced. Uh, these were working well on here, but we're going to step it up. So Doc, the team, happened to have extra steppers for sale the other day. And I said, me, 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 me. So these are the, the 20, the speed, the speedy power, the 2504s. So that's what we're going to put on here. And they had some, uh, they had some pulleys on them that ground up the, that drove, drove the, or goobered up the, the shaft here. They are, these are not the high temp version, no. What do you think about the all-wheel drive on V2? I haven't seen the specifics of a setup. I know what the all-wheel drive is, but I don't know anything about how it's done. Thanks for the membership. Do, 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 do. What do you do? do? Um, have you found a dark gray filament you like or still searching? I have some anthracite from 3DO. Anthracite dark gray or uh, ASA uh, from 3DO that I haven't printed with yet, but I'm going to print with it. I think it's still a little lighter than this, but I don't know if I'm going to find anything that's this dark. So. We are going to temporarily... Going to mount these up here. Get the, get the wire going that way. Hey, Steven. So, what do I need? Some M3 by 30. Break out our fastener tray. Where did, in the world did these go? Freeze that we're holding these. I think they're right here. Here they are. Oh, PF Dennis. Thanks for gifting memberships. Hey, Scott. Polymaker Dark Gray Galaxy. Well, we know how dark gray, dark Polymaker Dark Gray is. It's not very, right? <laughs> it's not dark gray. It's not dark enough. Polymaker makes some really nice galaxy filaments. Um, the dark gray is just not really dark gray. Oh, that was the wrong screw. <laughs> wrong spot. I have not tried Overture Slate Gray. Let me catch up. PF Dennis, thanks for the gifted memberships. Scott, howdy. It's like deja vu. I copied your colors on my green V2. I'm currently watching stream while upgrade this. Nice. I like dark grays. I have some Polymaker dark gray. I want something deeper and richer. The Polymaker dark gray is as dark. No, it's not. It's actually not. Um, especially the Galaxy. But I have some of the other dark gray too. Um, maybe if I remember next stream, I'll bring out the, the various grays I have and we'll compare them on the spool. Paramount has some nice grays. The last roll of Paramount I bought had the same kind of, that was, had gotten pale compared to their previous stuff. Like I had some iron red and then I bought another roll and it was like totally different color. It was so much more pale. So I haven't really bought any um, Paramount stuff. So you don't have to remove the entire AB gantry joint if you need to replace the steppers. Oh no, 
no, that just comes right on out. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be sneaking all the bearings back in here too. Which to be honest, I don't wanna actually tighten these yet. I can, I can leave them there, but I don't wanna tighten these cause that's just gonna compress that spot there. You have your transmission distance tester, don't you? Transmission distance. Oh, I do. Yes. Yes, I have a I have a transmission distance tester. The dark gray looks identical to the color I used on my Trident Matter th Matter 3D dark gray performance ABS. It's dark gray when you turn off the light. <laughs> Okay, let's do this. We gotta put bearings. We gotta put our bearing stacks back in here. Uh oh, grab all the screws that we were using for this. They're tucked away in the side of the workbench here. I think this'll, this'll be all or most of them. I have in between streams, I cleaned all these bearings, so they're all, all the uh, belt gunk is scraped out of them and wiped off. So, we got these and the shims. I got a whole pack of new Gates pulleys. Sounds good, my quest for the red, nothing matches that old roll. So what I think I'm going to try to do here, we're gonna need, Four of these. And two of these. And I am simply going to use a screwdriver as a guide to just kind of hold things in place. I'm gonna throw, and I'm probably gonna use some tweezers because it's gonna be easier. Throw a bearing on there, or a shim on there, and a bearing. Did you relube the bearings? I did not. These are all sealed. They don't have that many hours on them. Okay, so there's two bearings. Then I need two shims. You were right, I forgot how light the Polymaker Dark Gray is. I confuse it with a spool of some other black that's not hardly black at all. Yeah. There we go. So we have a shim, two bearings, two shims. And get our these bearings on, and this is when it starts getting a little tighter. There we go. And then we're down to the last bearing to put in here, our shim. Okay, so that's in there. Now I can push this all the way through, and that's all locked in, right? Now I should be able to just grab my, my screw here and work my work my way through there we go dinner making time peace see you max thanks for thanks for stopping by that worked out pretty good huh the stepper having the JST connector on the body and another connector on the wire. Yeah, I make this little harness. I, I do these these little harnesses for any of these steppers. Paramount used to have some really nice dark grays. Paramount was really good with the, the, the grays and natural tones and stuff. Um, I'm realizing I need to just take the stepper all the way off for here. get to the other one. So now we need the other set of steppers or bearings. And two more shims. So we'll do this. Do the same thing.
This one might get a little, a little more challenging. Just because less space, but. There we go. Is a pin mod to replace the screw in the bearing stack? It is. It is. Okay, so those are done. This does not need to be tight. It's threading into plastic under here. We also want to make sure that this here is not so this one I would probably advise not to tighten all the way until the stepper is in there and even then it's not very um it doesn't need to be tight you don't want it to push down on the stepper and tweak it This is hard watching your video, but trying to get firmware working on my Trident. There we go. And then we can just make sure that this is... That's good. That was that. Back here. Don't tweak the stepper. I mean, just just wait until we do the same thing on the front idlers. <laughs> we gotta we gotta get those back in too. All the bearings are out. I don't know if this is gonna help or not, but stage those right there. Do this guy first, I guess. Nope, didn't really help. <laughs> okay, so that guy there. there. Bearing. Number one. Shim. Shim. Bearing, bearing, shim. There we go. I need wider. Yes, yes, yes. I know. These are what's right here. Oh, where's my other tweezers? I don't have a good spot for my tweezers yet. I need to start printing my Gridfinity stuff. Where are my other tweezers? Oh, there they are. These aren't even wide, but they're a little better. Okay. One. Two. And the shim. The shim. No flying cows today? Oh. <laughs> does me or does the music make it sound like someone is about to get voted off the chat? Really? <laughs> um, what do I need? Oh, the other stepper. So the other stepper. Oh, yeah. This is 
when these, um, let's see if we can get a focus here. If you can see here, the grub screw driven into the side of it can sometimes make it, it wasn't actually that side, can sometimes make it hard to get a new, um, a new pulley on there. So I'm not really filing on it, I'm just getting the high spots. Not trying to remove any any of the main shaft, stepper shaft, just getting the just getting the high spots. V2 manual needs an update. Well this is this is the post, this is the maintenance instructions. I think it's still easier to do it off the printer when you're first building it. There we go. Now that'll go on there. And I have no idea where that's gonna need to go, but we will just just tighten the flat side for now. Let's use a hammer. I want to be able to move it easily. There. There. All these move fine. Everything's good. How many hours for maintenance for which part? New belt, regrease, new printed parts? How many hours? I don't know. It's a good question. How long would it take if I was just doing that kind of maintenance? Well, regrease what? Regrease rails. You're taking it apart a little further, right? Okay, so these are done. Flip this around. Let's see if we can get a adequate look. I think right there. And then zoom in there. This is going to be, this is definitely going to be tougher than the, than those rears were. We'll see what it, what it takes. Got lots of, lots of pieces here to, to grab. Okay, so I've got two shims and two bearings on one side. The plastic parts and the nuts. M5 by 40s. Um, missing a shim. But I'm not surprised. Grab another one. We've got extras of these. There we go. Same thing. We're doing beefy front idler just for Grant because he can't loop the belts. We are going to be looping the belts in these. I can, I will not guarantee that I'm not going to have trouble with it, but we are going to do it. And I need to take a little short video of doing it on Trident just for Grant. See, hey, Arthur. Okay, which side is this one? If that goes there, it's got to be that side. And that goes there that side but we're not going to put that on there yet we are going to i'm going to try to build this on top of a a bolt here so where are my tweezers i'm 
We've got less space here to work with. So I don't know if I'm gonna always get great camera angles. You know what? Maybe move this out of the way. Let's go in with this camera. That way I can get my head in there and you don't have to stare at the back of it. Oh yeah, that's a little better, right? I'm gonna give it a little bit of extra magnification. Okay, so I have one in here, right? We can go here. So I've got that set up in there. Would putting the printer on the side help? Um, I don't know, maybe. This camera angle is for Grant's benefit. So I got that there. I think I want to basically drop that from there. And then line this up from the top and I'm going to grab my screwdriver now because I don't want to just rely on being able to get that on the first shot. Now I've got something that's going to lock all those in and they're not going to, not going to fall out. So I got to work my way, work my way down like that. Got him. We would have been there for an hour shaking around. Put our nut in the bottom. And then I'm gonna get a good look in here. Make sure I got that bottom shim and it didn't it didn't find its way out somewhere. Nope, it's in there. So we'll do that again on this side. Oh, let's turn that off. This guy comes out of here. So the reason I use this bolt for the first setup here is so it keeps it lined up and then if it just drops straight down, as long as it doesn't catch somewhere, that's the trick is it's gotta be able to drop straight down. Um, then things will be lined up a little easier for sticking the screwdriver up from the, from the other. Wow, MacBoy, 50 gifted memberships, thank you. How are we doing on likes and stuff? We got the... We got 230 people here, but we don't have nearly enough likes. <laughs> okay, here let's let's close this up. <laughs> Give everyone something to zoom in on. Okay, let's see if I can get this. So this is going to be wrong handed for me. <laughs> I'm going from the top here to help line things up apparently. Do you run ACM bottom panels 
Just got mine in. On uh, some of my printers, I don't run them on all. Um, it's basically whatever I had or was part of the build when I did it. Okay, so that is in. Make sure this is all lined up, hopefully. And then, there we go. Nice. Now we're just gonna go straight up from the bottom, hoping not to dislodge those. There we go. Oops, I did, I, I messed it up. I gotta, now I gotta fix it. I forgot to put the, Okay, back to lining it up. Drop that through, put this thing on, and then put our screwdriver back through. There we go. The other way. And it's, let's see. There we go. That's in. Call all the new members. Don't forget to like. I'm I'm right-handed. Sorry for the chat spam. That's not chat spam, Mac boy. <laughs> Let's see. 40 new likes. Awesome. 132. Need more coffee to get those hands moving. I know. Which mod is this? This, this isn't a mod. This is the, this is the standard, um, X or idlers. So the idea is to go through here. This is a potential checking on something else later. Other, other versions, the, I, what BFIs or whatever for future. I'm a student living in Korea. I'm enjoying your video. Awesome. Thank you for making many videos like this. Well, thanks for, thanks for watching. You do this with a lot less swearing than me. Okay. Show. That, I, that went better than I expected. <laughs> um, I was, I, I honestly wasn't expecting that all to go that well. So. All of our bearings are in place. Do you foresee a change to the stock idlers in the future? At some point, I'm sure. At some point. Now we can belt it. We can belt it. Now I am going to be using that GT3 belt. I'm hearing, and I'd like to know more, that the frequency, the, the tension that it likes to run at is really high. Um, I, like I said, I'd like to know what impact that has if you don't run it that high. Do you still get an improvement from it? Maybe just maybe not to the potential. I don't know. Almost always look like you're in control of the build, but that was really slick. <laughs> I, 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 I feel like um, there was a little bit of luck there. Things just lining up, but <laughs> VFAs mostly. Well, we'll see how it goes, I guess. Clean that off. Um, requires attention that is too much for the steppers. So we're, we're going to run them. We're not going to run them at that tension. We'll find out what happens. Um, I have, this is a lot of that belt. I have a lot of it. So, okay. Let's get one side of this ran so we can know what 
length of belt we're gonna need. Um, why am I doing that? Let me grab one of my belts that I took out and do it that way. Let's do that. <laughs> and it's code. Have you tried sheet metal plates for the AB drives on any of your machines? I've been super pleased with them and Funzer makes cool pins for the bearings to sit on. Um, no, but our Trident, my Trident 250 rebuild. So a similar concept to what we're doing here, a bunch of mods on a V2. We will be doing on my gray Trident. Um, and that will have the double T nine millimeter CNC machine gantry set up on it. What specific steppers and stuff I'm gonna use for that, I still need to research and figure out the, the rest of that um, configuration. I'm gonna give myself, I don't know how much I need. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of extra from what I had before and hope that's enough. GT2, GT3 are the same pulley profiles. Yes. Yes. And this is, here. let's see if we can get a focus here. Come on, maybe we'll go here. There we are. This is what we're putting on. It's still 2M GT. I have not played with the new belt tension tool. Nope. See there's someone working on an MPC control instead of PID for Clipper. It'll be interesting. So where is in, what is MPC compared to PID? I don't, I don't know that. <sighs> GT3 is generation two is the profile. Hey, Phil Morris. Okay. I'm going to do these back this way. It should line up. Okay, two belts. Those aren't the right length and I just wasted a bunch of belts or I used it on another build. <laughs> How many hours were on the V2 before the maintenance started? We'll open up. Um, I don't know that I have 100% history because I think I built this before Mainsail or Moonraker was recording history, but we'll see what's recorded on the Pi when we get it back hooked up as far as hours on the printer. None of my printers have extreme hours on them because I have so many. Um, spread it out across the, the printers that are working at the time. And printers spend long times um, waiting to be worked on. So, okay. Next, we are going to belt it, which is going to require us to get into the Vitali CNC tap setup. So let's get this, at least the belt side of this assembled and go over that stuff so almost three thousand a lot of hours that's a lot of hours to me that's a lot of hours to me we have 240 people 150 likes i'm sure we can hit 200 likes in the next 50 minutes before the giveaway right okay this is the metal tap github page I'm going to paste this link in the chat. There we go. And this has some information. There's some STLs to print. And there is a little install video. So drop in replacement or original Voron tap. Um, designed for CNC milling. Works with all the same parts as the original version. Is metal tap or tap V2 better? What do you mean tap V2? Um, so there's a bomb. It comes with stuff. It comes with nice N52 magnets. It comes with screws. And then there's a little picture 
instructions for how the belts are ran in it. Oh, Phoenix tap. Um, I don't, I don't really want to comment too much on Phoenix tap because they're, um, because it's current iteration may or may not be what ends up being released. And I haven't actually used the, the Phoenix tap yet. I'm still, I've, I've made some progress. I have recently done some wiring and progress on the printer and I need to make more, but I have a new incentive to make more progress. I'm going to do um, Gridfinity in this tool chest I just bought. And I realized I can print the base in one piece on that. So. Okay. If we look at this, there is a little assembly video. And I'll skip our ad here in a second. Harper Free ad. But this is pretty decent. There's no sound in it anyway. Um, and it just kind of goes through. There's some printed parts and some heat sets to put in. We should do that. Heat sets to put in there. That's full getting the out of bone broth going on. Oh, good. Um, and then you glue in some magnets into those parts. A couple of screws. MPC is model predictive control. It's something that Marlins had as an experimental control mode that's supposed to be more advanced in PID. Okay. And then there's other instructions on what size screws and stuff. We, instead of watching all of this, we'll just go and start. Um, I think I've got printed or printed parts over here. It's all out of the way. So we have two of these. I printed all these in the silver uh, 3D Print Life ABS. Also work for Dragon Burner, or do you still need an adapter? I have no idea. I don't have any experience with Dragon Burner. Need two of these. And one of these. And that's all the printed parts there are. I think the weaker magnet would require less force to actuate. Right, but then it can shift more easily, right? So instead of using two magnets that you do on some of the other higher um, rigidity setups, you use one on here, but a stronger magnet. Oh, no dragon burner yet. Nope. I haven't. It hasn't come up. Zol is going to come up. That's the plan right now for, um, for the Trident. Because I have the 9mm version of this as well. There's a 9mm version. This is a 6mm going on here. The 9mm will go on the Trident. Steve Clark, welcome. I link the Clipper plug-in repo, which is still very early development in the Marlin description. Okay. Okay. Let's... These are going to be fun to hold because they don't have a nice flat surface to... So I'll just, I'll just kind of hold it and do it. That'll be fine. That'll be fine. I won't burn myself. Does this, did this kit come with heat sets? Ooh, it came with heat sets. I'm gonna use, so it came with hardware and it came with heat sets. I'm gonna use those. And it came with a little QR code for assembly instructions. And a cool little picture. I plan to go tap changer, so I'm gonna be getting pretty well acquainted with the Dragon Burner. Be plan to use included belt clamps to hold the belts and feel free to ignore belt loops. Oh, okay. With N52 magnets and screws, it's plenty to hold it. The force is surprisingly strong. Okay. 
so let's let's make a little little bin here just for my tally tap stuff. So we're gonna need two, three, four, five, six of these, I think. That guy goes in right like that, I think. And then further. Let's grab something I can use. No, I guess that. I'll just use this. Whatever. Um, yeah. I'm just gonna push that in. And then just make sure we're nice and flush. Pressing it into a piece of metal. I'm trying not to burn my fingers. Tap R8 within 52 magnets puts down about 1,500 grams of pressing force. That's a lot. Nice and flush. All that's in there. Let's do it to all of them. These parts I printed, because they're so small and it didn't take long, um, I printed them at 0.1 layer height. So they look nice and really smooth yeah and these ones are a little easier of a spot to see if I can hold that. To say which FOV your angry cam is on the printer. Um, I don't know what the what the angle is. Someone did ask me about that camera. I'm sorry, I forgot to respond. Was that you? Um, it is one of the WaveShare OM 5648s or whatever. Um, I do have a, a wider angle one for a Trident that I haven't installed yet though. Okay, these will be a little easier. Now in here use wave share 5.5 inch, 5.5 inch 2K screen. What resolution is that? Or I guess what aspect ratio too. Some of those are. Okay. Adam made the VLMP free on printables today. I did see that. And it, it, it encourages me to um, get this mount posted because then I can just post it up there as a remix to that um, for the pine sole. Okay, so things are printed. So now we're going to take this guy and these guy, this guy needs, this guy needs a, um, that go that way? Is that what goes there? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I need to glue that magnet in. Where is my glue for this? Hey, Remy. The wider angle and on the Trident works great. The heat has caused it to have a purple tinge though, but still good enough to see what your printer is doing. The camera that's in my Tridex um, does it, it has failed, but then it comes back. It's working again, but I don't think it's long for this world. The heat is an issue on these. Um, I think the glue I want to use is in the other garage still. So let me um, here put a little, little display of parts out here. There you go. I can stare at those and I'll be right back. 
um, see how much of that um, Max is going to cover up. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, size is like a regular thing. It's a UI that's super mega sharp. You guys gotta chill on the bagel talk. <laughs> I need to go to bed soon. You're making me run to the store. I'm gonna make my stomach growl. This is what I've been using, okay? Get this on Amazon. It's, it's basically a CA glue with a flex agent in it. So, and it seems to work pretty well. Um, I don't think I've had any failures from it. I don't have, know if I have something on a printer that would fall apart right now that I haven't checked yet, but um, I've recommended this to some of the other folks in the Voron team and got recommended um, it from there. And I think it's got um, a bit of use on it with success. So we need the magnets. Oh, did you really mark these? Nice. They have a mark on them for the negative pole, I guess. Um, let's see. How am I going to get these in there? It doesn't matter. So this goes on there. Yeah, I've got... And you can just press it in and it'll be fine. These are strong. There we go. <laughs> and these look like they're actually three millimeters. I just looked at them compared to my other quote unquote three millimeter ones. <laughs> yeah, the, the Bob's Industries whatever one is black, right? For their rubberized... CA glue. Okay. Um, epoxy is a good, a good solution for these. I just don't want to deal with mixing it. If I can get away with something I don't have to mix, then that's going to be my preference. So, okay. Um, this doesn't matter what the polarity is, so I'm just going to glue them in the way they go. I'll make them both the same, but it doesn't matter to which one. So I want to make sure I'm good. Put things here. You don't need a lot. Get the bubbles out first. We'll use my tray. It's not really the optimum angle here. Is that all as far as it goes in? No, oh, it doesn't. Okay. It doesn't. Oh yeah, it's not, it's not full depth. Okay. I'm glad I didn't squeeze on that too hard. on the end of my other magnets so I can hold it. Would E6000 be a good option for that also? I haven't, I know E6000 is a, is a really popular 
uh, an adhesive of choice for many things. I don't actually own any, and I haven't really used it. Um, it's one of those things I keep meaning to pick up some to, to try in the different various situations where it's useful, but I haven't done it yet. Okay, so I think this goes in as far as it needs to, just with hand pressure. So I'm not going to actually squeeze that one. But, yeah. What is the name of the model for the Halloween-themed container that you put purge scraps in? Green and black. Is this what you're? Is this what you're talking about? One of these drippy bucket? Drippy pail, drippy drip pail, or drippy pail, or something on printables. Hey, Hoppy Knack from New Zealand. Welcome. I'm going to build a 2.4 and mod it to a tool changer. Nice. Tap changer. EZ6000 on Lexan RC bodies to keep them from ripping. We use Shugu um, for that. I've always used Shugu for that and then sometimes some fiberglass tape as well. Drippy pail. Yeah. E6000 proof pretty picky about plastics in general. It tends to glue those things that acetone affects. Okay. Okay. That is on there. And then there is also, we can, we can confirm we've got this going. Let me start up fusion because there is CAD for this. Shugu is similar to E6000. Is it? I don't, I don't know. Let me open up the CAD for this. Then I can have something to refer to instead of watching that video. Someone can link the heat insert press plans with the mod for the pine salt. So the, the heat insert press, search for VLMP on um, printables now. And you can see what the parts that are out there. And then the, the pine salt mount, I haven't published on printables yet but it is on my, in my Discord, in the files channel. Hey, Polar Ted. Top bolts in stealth burner manual, call out 25 millimeter socket head cap screws from front. Those look long, seems better. Am I doing something wrong? Off the top of my head, I don't know, Brent. I'd have to look at it. Um, okay, let me open. Here we go. So then this is the part that's the magnet holder. That's the other part. This is a M three by four and let's get rid of this. This is an M three by six from the back. So we now take this guy and the, these four holes are for the MGN 12 and that's the countersunk side. So this is the part that goes up against the carriage. So this guy is going to go facing up right here with an M3 by six from the back. Famous Polar Ted, it is. Hey, Rain Motorsports, welcome. And then those are in a slot so that similar on the printed tap, you want to um, get everything assembled and then you'll loosen this and have it lock up against the, the screws that the magnets attract to. And I'm going to let this be at the, at the low point in that adjustment for right now. We'll show those later to streams. That should be okay. Those don't have to be tight yet. So then the MGN rail goes on there. So I'm going to reuse one of my um, carriages from another printed tap that I just 
um, took off of another printer. Fully on a I'm going to the eye doctor base blade. 2020 is no more. It happens. I tested it 2015 at one point in my life. Now I'm nowhere close to that and wearing contacts. Okay, where did I put the little printed holder here? So throw this onto here. I kind of want to make sure that this goes back together the same way. So I'm going to grab a marker first and mark the side of the, the top side of that. I've already got the mark on the carriage. Will there be a new club when someone in the Polar Ted Club is selected and gone a second time? Oh, that's a good question. If someone is a two-time member of the of the Polar Ched Club, we'll have to think of something. Let's go with that on there and let's just set this on the printer. So now that is going to bolt onto here. But the same thing that we learned on CNC is we got metal to metal. Let's make sure that things are right there. Top it goes in right there. And that actually kind of holds in there just from the tolerance, it looks like. Do you use sensorless homing? I have CNC to X carriage like the tap carriage, and it's caused me a ton of problems with end stops. I um, have been moving more of these printers to sensorless homing. Okay, let's let's get this out of the way. And it's parts of it, but that is an M3 by six, and this one's the M3 by 10. So we're gonna use a little bit of Loctite. I still say you need a Top Gear style board for the Polar Ted Club. I need something. I do. There's there's so much that I need to do on the channel. Merchandise, all the little things that I have not used the brain cycles to manage. Okay, that one, and this one. So these are metal to metal, no plastic in between, nothing to squish to hold things in place. So we will be, we are using Loctite. How about a two-time member of Polar Tip Club deserves first chance at becoming a third-time member? <laughs> okay, I don't think there's any reason not to just type it. And then the 10 millimeter that's in here, similar to the printed tap, gets a heat set insert as a spacer. Now it is in the instructions and in here, in, in the video instructions, it's backwards. Um, in here it is, it is correct. So there is a, a small diameter side and a thicker side to these heat sets. And it is better to put the larger diameter side down into the bore of the, of the rail. It just has more surface area to tighten against. And the smaller diameter side being on the back side of the button head is fine. But the video has that backwards. So if you look at this, you got the, the regular top side and then normally the, the tapered side, not the tapered side on first. Charlie t-shirt, Laura says, shut up and take my money. <laughs> you guys keep this up and Steve will have to change the Tuesday night drawing prize to a, a dozen bagels. Are we still talking about bagels? Would you use Loctite on the screws that go into metal? On the screws that go into metal? Um, I, not typically if, not typically if it's clamping plastic. Um, it's really these metal to metal rigid assemblies that I think it's required. Like that, this holding the, those magnets on, I don't think is required. And then that doesn't stick up as much, but that should stop the, the carriage from dropping. 
this thing as long as you have solid stops for the head to bump sensorless should work fine unless you prefer locks and cream cheese on donuts on donuts no <laughs> Okay, not going to put the, the rail on there yet. Is there anything else that bolts on here? No, 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 no. So let's move these out of the way. Let's just put these up on here. Was a little little abrupt okay so this is here and ready and take a belt and determine its proper orientation and we're gonna go here here it's going to push all the way back. What do we got? Another 22 minutes. We're at 166 likes. We really need to hit 200. Really need to hit 200. And at the point when my regulars get tired of that fun, let me know. <laughs> okay. So then this is going to go... Which way does it go? It goes on the front here, right? Does it go on the front or the back of the of the belt? I think it goes on the front. So that goes there. It'll come through here. And we can just grab this. Right there, right? So this comes through here. Then we'll put a little bit of a bend in here. And we're going to see it from the back here. And because we have a V2, there's a gap here, a gap. So I'm going to take some tweezers and see where we're, see where we're going. And I'm going to just try to force that to go on the other side of the, the other side of the extrusion instead of out this the side. There we go. Now oh, it's in there. Okay. See? Come on, Grant. That was easy. <laughs> First print is going to have to be a bagel. I don't know what the first print's going to be. That is a good question. That goes on back through here. Now, before I put this belt through here, I can eyeball this pulley height a little better than it is right now. So... The idea is I can sight along this bearing stack here and line it up. Wow, it's really close right now, but line it up so that the pulley is centered on this pulley stack. So, um, I'm within a fraction of a millimeter of being um, right on, but it's not right on. It needs to be needs to be shifted down just a hair. Probably right about there. That was really just like nothing. That's where that's going to go. And while I'm here, I'm going to get this one. And this one's a bit further off than that one was. Make sure I get the flat, flat side. Air up. So 
long as you're looking on it straight. And then we'll double fine tune that when we get the belts on, but this is really close now. If you can print in chocolate now, I don't see why you can't print a bagel. Okay, so this, <laughs> this is pre, this is not R2. It has the, the full gaps here where people, this is a common belting issue doing that, right? So this is the older version of these stepper motor mounts. There's no reason to change them out if it's fine. We can take this through the top here. Then back down through here, and then we can push that around. Use our tweezers to push it. There we go. Right there. And this is going to go through here. my arm this here this goes through All right there I got one side belted I got plenty of plenty of extra there real trap That is that misrouting on the back, even on the revised parts, is still very common. What is that gantry extrusion? This is the common anomaly uh, machined. Now we didn't talk about this before, but the 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 GitHub page for this. Remember we talked about this, the weight of this. I think the first first stream was a lot of. Um, talking about the weight. Um, it turns out that this whole setup, weight on my scale, is significantly lighter than the parts I'm taking off. So. Fusion 360 Pro, is it possible to do motion link joints to simulate the GT2 belt? It is. Yep. Swapping over to a phone and going to bed. Almost four already. Okay. Right there. We are going to do the same thing. So let's determine the orientation of the belt first. So it's going to go like this. It's just going to go around the same way. So this goes this way. through here, pull this through here, then you'll see it from this other angle now, take it this way and then I'm going to kind of do my best to give a little bit of a, a curve to the, to the belt. Bought one of those rails from West 3D when first released, it didn't have instructions, so I was like assembling in the dark. Well, there aren't really instructions on this one either. There's the, the GitHub with some information. So now if I take this in from this side, we will, we'll see that it, it gets caught on the frame here. I don't know if you can, you can see, see the belts in there getting caught, but if I go in here with my tweezers and just push it that way, it goes right through here. Okay. Yeah. 
I've been looking high and low and can't find those titanium backers with the color pattern on them. They are custom. They are made by um, Whopping Pockard. And I don't believe, and I don't know that they aren't, I don't know if they're going to continue or do them again, but I don't believe they are doing them for now. Oh, that's funny. That's hilarious now that I look at this. This side I never changed, but I actually tested it on this. Um, so this side is the updated one. <laughs> so I have mismatched drives here. This one has the, the, the extra plastic here that's supposed to discourage routing the belts across it. Okay, so then we're gonna go through here. I like to go, well, we can go all the way through, that's fine too. But coming up through the this hole in the top just makes things easier to, to get down into here. And then you just push the, push the belt over the, there, just like that. Get that up on its spot, get that going in there. This goes across. I think you updated the, the A motor side on the streams two years ago because you wanted the newer Z chain holders. Oh, that makes sense. Look at this. Folks that have been around forever remembering more about my builds than I do. I think I can just. Okay. Gonna have all of these here, some fashion, not necessarily lined up or even, but brain is crazy and remembering things from videos or streams. And we have this guy and we can do this a couple of different ways, apparently. But this comes through from the back and then it can go back through. I don't know if I can use this. So the, the belt comes up through from the back and then it can tuck back into this the next slot and that's locked in once it's bolted on there that's not coming off or it came with um those square nuts to that camera's not great but to hold them i'm not sure which way i'm gonna go yet what models rail stopper you have on your z rails the rail stopper that i have on my z rails are you talking at the top? Those are from the 2.2 days, I think. Are you talking about these? These are from V2.2, I think. Or are you talking about these? These are just the V2, uh, V2.4 ones. So this is, um, v2.2 but this back right one i had to cut a corner of it off otherwise it was interfering with the the i think it was the 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 wire cover here was hitting on it okay i think what i'm going to do is do maybe do a combination this side i might lock in um, and make sure it's the same on both sides. And the other side, I may use the, the, the belt clamp 
um, so it's easier to adjust. So if I, if I take this side and put it in and adjust it so that the belt lengths are exactly the same, that, is that right? Or does it need to be one more? I think that's it. Use the screw clamps for the belt, holds them nicely for getting them aligned. Yeah, I'm thinking one side, and then I just use work on this side for tension. Now, the screws that go in here are, what are they? Just looking at the CAD real quick for screw sizes. And they're not in there. They're not in there. Are they? Let's go here. It's got to be in three by sixes because that's all that's left. <laughs> so these are probably not quite ready to go in. I think I need to take this and just get it started through here. Top one. The bottom one, and then I can, I can just get them started. Have you tried Clippian Shake Tune for fine tuning your belt tensions yet? It's a real handy tool. Um, no, but I want to, and that's just a matter of not having time to sit down with a printer. Um, I've gone through some stuff that Rath has walked me through on doing belt tensioning um, with the commands, the input shaper commands, but I haven't installed clip, clipane or whatever the, that. Okay, so that's on there. I have a lot of extra belt. This can come together. I can go around and make sure everything's up on the, the bearing stacks. And in there, and in there. Oops, not that. That, probably. <sighs> Mark IV upgrade kit arrives tomorrow, nice. Okay. So then these can come through here. A couple of screws that go on here. So just threaded in a couple of threads. Oh, I, I'll pull these out one at a time and do some um, Loctite on them. These will need Loctite. Did you print your own parts for the CNC tap kit? I did, I did. And I printed them in here. Let's see if this will show but I printed them in this. Oh, come on, focus, focus. I guess that's... I printed them at 0.1 layer height. <laughs> Kinda, it's not really focusing well enough. Maybe not enough light. I need to figure out my lighting game. But 0.1 layer height, they turned out really good. <laughs> a lot of fun, I'll be watching Steve's streams on it a few more times. Um, oh, and now we're all over. <laughs> um, okay, this is basically on. And then it's just a matter of making sure that they are tensioned about the same. Maybe here, there are these uh, kind of maker beam style um, plates. How long did that 0.1 layer height take to print? I printed three sets at a time because I wanted, you know, layer time to be good. And um, this goes on here. I wanted layer time to be uh, a little extra layer time. So I printed three sets at a time and I think it still only took like an hour, maybe it was two hours. What do we got? Four more minutes until Giveaway time. We still have nine more likes to go. We got nine more likes to go. 
So now I'm just gonna kind of work on um, belt tension. So I'm gonna pull this, hopefully, and I got lots of, there we are. One extra tooth there and one extra tooth there. Still checking my, my lengths, which you can't really see. Um, and that's probably a good spot right there. I don't have to fully tighten that, but those are the same length and it is on there now. Everything's moving smooth. Not riding on any spots. There should be as many likes as there are viewers, any less is unacceptable. We need 200, we need 63 more then. Okay, and, and counting, we're 271 people here. Okay. Now, notice I didn't put the adjustment screws in here when I was belting it, because it does they do get in the way. That was part of the problem that, that Grant was having, is not removing those screws. And I don't know if the instructions say to. If they don't, they really need to. Hey, Jeff. I'm not a huge tap fan. I got to say that's a pretty piece of metal. It is. It's, it's nicely machined. Itali has done a good job. Just looking at the, the quality of the parts is good. We'll see how it works. So. so especially when you are especially when you have a, a rigid, this is um, CNC machine, but even on the printed stuff, you should. Don't just tighten one side and then the other, because as you tighten these belts, it's gonna tweak your gantry. And that's probably an even worse idea when everything is CNC and bolted um, together. You're going to tweak something. So a little bit of adjustment at a time each side is probably a good idea. Getting your, your tension in. I don't know where we want to be yet, but I mostly just want to be at a point where it's it's at a somewhere close for um, just the assembly. And your tensions are going to get relatively close um, when the gantry hits the, some point at the same time on both sides. It's not gonna be perfect, but it'll get you close. Somehow a Prusa load cell needs to be adapted. Yes, absolutely. A load cell of some sort. <laughs> Don't remember her almost from the first stream I saw from memory, it was the Trident build, it was. So this is not our final tension, but this is enough to know that we are, um, this is where we're gonna assemble the rest of it at. We'll deal with final belt tensioning when the when we get it set up. But it is belted. And now I am going to, since all of that is staying nice, let's pull this and get some Loctite on these screws and get them in. Before I forget, because if I don't do this, I'll forget. I'm gonna be the best tap option, tried them all, nice. The only ones, the only one I've tried prior to this is the, um, the Chaotic Lap. And I've tried the V1 and the V2, and they both work for me. I haven't had any trouble with either of them. I actually have pretty reasonable input shaper results. Um, I think it's even a V1 on my gray um, Trident. We are at giveaway time, but I want to get these Loctited in. So we're a minute past. <clears throat> Extra entry time. <coughs> Extra hitting that like button time. <laughs> Is 
there any plans or any play in your chaotic? No, the the V ones, uh, yes, at the, the very beginning, but they've been um, the rails have been replaced on them. I mean, we we noticed that play when I installed the very early one. Okay, all of that's there. I think that should go on. We have lots of adjustment in the front idlers, so I am going to cringe cutting that much belt off. Look over here. When that hits there, uh, that's about all I want there. Yeah, I don't want any more belts over there, so I'm just going to cut that. I'll cut that a little bit out and enough to where I can still grab it later. So even the first ones, Kittrell had the high wind rails. If you have one with a lot of play, I don't, I don't know if it's if they'll still honor it, but I would definitely contact them and see about getting the rail replaced. Um, you may even try contacting, like I, I know Fabrico had some MGN7 rails made for those. They, if they still have any, you can try that. Um, Rockin' R8 printed tap, and I do get a decent amount of play with the LDO rails. There are, <laughs> on so many of these, these these companies are learning lessons as they go. I have Z0 and Z1 um, preload rails. What's gonna go on here is a, is a Z1. But if you look here, the Z1 is the, the medium preload. The Z0 is, you want the Z1 over the Z0. And that's, that's to do with this, that's to do with the, any of the, the rails, the Y rails don't really matter. You can run Z zero and it's just fine. They are, um, because they're, they're the way they're installed, they're, uh, attached to the X gantry. You're not going to notice anything. Um, they're, they're constrained, um, from, from rotating. You're not going to notice. You're not going to notice on your Z on your X. You probably want the Z one or medium preload or whatever. Okay, giveaway time. Filament giveaway time. We are at 223 likes. Um, 280 people here. That's good enough. What does preload actually mean? Um, it's that tolerance between the, the, the bearings and the, the track on the rail, right? So. Hey, J.R. Kirk. Okay, let me grab, let me grab this. Maybe where I need to do a new wheel of names. Oh, it reset on me. It reset on me. Okay, well, we'll have a generic wheel of names today. Does your Phoenix build have preload? Um, yes, but I'm pretty sure they're Honey Badger Rails. Um, okay. The, anybody who hasn't been part of one of my filament giveaways or any giveaways, I closed the entry form when there hasn't been a new entry in three seconds. Um, so those of you that like to play the game, now is the time. <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't like the Z0 preload on the X. I reckon I need to swap it out. Yeah. Even with a, a little bit of sw wiggle there, you can still get good prints. I mean, I was running my original V2 um, or V0 um, with an old LDO rail on it for a long time and still getting good, good prints. So if you're seeing something that you, you figure might be able to be cured by that, then sure, try swapping it out. <laughs> last three seconds was 10 minutes no it wasn't it wasn't 10 minutes we've had a few new entries though see so three just closing to leave the slackers the next week two time to go get food one and a half i think everybody that's going to enter has entered so one half quarter. Oh, there was one. Three, 
Do you just slow at counting, folks? Three. Oh, I did it twice. I didn't have a new entry, but I reset it. I shouldn't have. Two. One. This is a good round number. We're done. <laughs> you didn't get in. It's your own fault. Okay, honored to I got the first one after I forgot to enable it for a while, huh? And who got the last one in there? Number 275 is Jeff. Who else is trying to get in there late? Eh, not too many. Second spool. Copy that. And paste it in here. Okay. We are going to, we have 275 entries. We are past number, yes, this is number 72, right? No, 71. Or number 71. Um, What do we have here? What do we want to do? What are our numbers? I don't even know. Uh, two and nine. Number between two and nine. Let's just do a number between two and nine. I know the the like the like ratio is good is good it could be better two and nine three point one four what do we have here six let's do six one two three four five six spin it reset on me. I, I usually start this up before and I can fix it when it resets, but I forgot to. Bearded Bucket, congratulations. Are you here? You have two minutes to say something, but I've seen your name in here. You still have to say something. And you're getting extra time because Siri decided to activate instead of my timer. Bearded Bucket, are you here? Congratulations. Bearded Bucket is here and used their, used their milestone chat for that. Well played. Well played. Okay. So I have Sundays to send out as well. So I will send both of these out. Made sure to make sure you knew what. Make sure what that. Do, 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 do. I'm on mobile so I couldn't tag. That's fine. I see ya. Let me unpin. I'm going to paste this in here. Oh, what happened there? Message unpinned. Because okay. I wasn't there. There, and there, and there. And we got a good... You have your own domain. Good job. So do I. Um, That's saved. Close that. Unpin and delete from the description. Because I really need to be better at that. Congratulations. If you are in the U.S. or Canada, you'll get a coupon to the U.S. or Canada Polymaker stores. If you're outside, then you get a form that has a long list of filament you get to choose a roll out of. So for the rest of the TH now, we go two to three hour, hours further. Uh, we got to keep these relatively short. Um, okay. We are at this point. We can get the rest of this tap assembled and we'll just do it right about here i think so we have other pieces to put together this is going to go on here like that Oop, timer's done so stop the stream and make a new one so it stays short <laughs> you know i mean the the there is a certain level of um we have a lot to do on these printers and two and a half hour chunks does does take a while but both for folks that watch the vod and for my own getting stuff done during the week's sake it just has to be what it has to be so it does include so all the hardware in here is stainless steel except for these little four millimeter button or flat heads and they have to be um they can't be stainless because they are not as well attracted to these magnets so that's going to go in there. 
just goes to, to flush. And that way, that sticks well to those guys. So stop spending to do eight hour streams for Trident. Yeah. Well, those are all Sunday streams too. This is my, this is my convincing myself that it's a good idea to do a completely different time. So folks that want to see this content doesn't have to, it's not as big of a commitment to watch the, the VOD. Once your Milo is complete, maybe machine CNC tap parts. That would be interesting. The setup is, it's all in the setup. Set up in the cam. Okay. So then these go on here. So there's a little machine pocket and that goes in there. Does that actually get into the pocket or am I going to have to make sure I don't have any scrape these to make sure I don't have any uh, elephant foot that's keeping it from sitting in there properly. So just little bits, little bits here. I like the timing of these streams. Evening streams are always pretty chill and they're a good way to wrap up the day. Yeah. little bits just making sure that my print's not gonna keep myself from these sitting up in here but yeah because that sets into the that sets into the printed part a little better there I think you can see it's all the way in there now okay I am this does not include all the screws you need. I'm missing some, some, I, I don't know if it's expected to have all the screws you need, but it is missing some. Let's see what size that was supposed to be. So these guys, are in three by fours and I don't have, I don't have any more in three by fours. The M three by six, I have plenty of, and I think that'll be okay. Yeah, that'll be fine. But I don't know if I should have had those or not. Must be a better solution than putting that rail on the tool head. There's all kinds of solutions. This is just a solution. showing but I'm just scraping the corners of these we are back on the um the 3d set sakura 240 build this saturday back on the sakura build this saturday so and there will likely if i can if i can make it happen the idea is two charlie's angel streams in march all because i want to get that 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 one built so okay and then that's that's on there we are going to take this put it on here now right is there anything else that's no nope, i think we're okay So something that is interesting. So I was having trouble with printed tap on my blue V2. And I had recently pulled the whole tool head apart and just went through and tightened all the screws, just made sure everything was tight. Um, 
And after that, I was having problems with consistent first layer heights. Um, so consistent first layer height problems. So I, I didn't know what was going on. I tried a few different things, took it apart again. And I, I mean, I was at this point where I need that printer to just work. So I took it apart. I had another chaotic lab tap that I, on the shelf that I was installing. So I get it all set up and I pull everything apart. And I notice there's a single ball bearing right on the top here. And I think it was rolling around and getting in the way sometimes. <laughs> it had come out when I was putting the rail on and it was a single bearing from inside the MGN9 that was sitting in there. <laughs> okay, that goes there. This has, so now this piece and this piece go together and this bolts to there like that to generate this piece. So if we look at the bolts, for this, this bolt here is an M3 by six. And this one, we're gonna use some Loctite on. And then this is the M3 by 12, which I may have to grab from the other shop. I want to use stainless. I don't think I have them over here, but I don't need it right now. But that's for the indexing, the tool head. And then down here, these are M3x4s again, but I think M3x6s will be okay. I don't think they're gonna get in the way of anything. Uh, the bed of my MK3S sometimes makes a crunch noise for months. Tonight I found a bed magnet stuck to a rod behind the bearing. Yep. So those can occasionally come out, I've heard. I've never had that happen, but um, they can pop out. Okay, so this is gonna go in here to here. Probably stick with optical touch probe, no tap for me. I don't know. I have not had any other solution give me as consistent of first layers as tap. The, um, I had clicky and Euclid along with the auto Z offset thing. And I don't know what was going on, but with the auto Z offset, I had a lot of trouble and I never troubleshot it further to try to figure out what was going on. What the next step I wanted to do was just get rid of the Z end stop and just use clicky as, as probe. But I never got to that when, by the time tap was introduced. I found that the carriage wiper hits the top of the rail in its travel. I wound up grinding a taper on the rail so it doesn't bind on it. The probe and nozzle height difference is a constant. I don't get it. It's not. Um, it depends on how long you've heat soaked. It depends on um, the 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 where it probes on a textured bed how rough the texture is ah uh, okay so that is there and then this piece goes on here now there's it says four millimeters but i'm hoping sixes will work because i'm <laughs> i'm out of fours Vitaly, was this supposed to, I, I might be missing some of the, some of the hardware. Didn't come with enough. And fours are not common is the problem. M3 by fours aren't in the typical, in the typical um, set of 
and fastener stuff. Did it seem like you always needed to lower your Z for a good first layer? That's what I see. I don't remember. Um, I, it was just inconsistent. Those are not here. Let me loosen that. Okay, that, those sixes worked. That doesn't seem like it's straight, does it? What is going on there? It's not. Why isn't it? My bad, forgot, probably put them in the package. Can you check another package? Well, I could grab them out of the, the nine millimeter package, probably. That's okay. This is all, this is all working. I'm just going to kind of tweak this until it's a little closer. Okay. And then got a optical tap it should bolt in there like that um this this part needs revised it is hitting what is it hitting on so i th think so it is hitting on some components back there and they're i don't know how many different of these boards there are but i'm gonna want to trim that to make that miss. So I can feel that rocking on there. Now I gotta figure out where I want to trim this so that it doesn't damage anything. So first of all, I'm gonna trim the pins on the back of this. They can they can get trimmed and see if that takes care of it first. Just those. Yeah, that was it. Um, not a hundred percent. There is not a hundred percent close, but. That, that black component right there, that guy there, is rubbing right there. So. I'm going to go in here and just trim a little bit. Don't want to, um, optical sensor can be sensitive to extra light getting in. So I want to try to minimize what I'm trimming. There we go. Now it's fine. Okay. Can you think of the night and come to see Junior? Torque you apply when tightening the nozzle, not like to be cons constant. I'm talking about. Okay, there we go. Roll from there. This can loop over the. You kind of, kind of hook it, hook it over this tab in the top, All right, like that. These are the ones that are going to be the problem now, because those do need to be a four millimeter, four millimeter screw. So I do need to go get 
the other kit and snag the four millimeter screws from that unless I have did buy those are the M5s I had bought something for what was it for where did I put those I don't think I have button heads though I do need some inf inf uh, four millimeter button head. So I'm gonna go grab the other tap kit so I can steal them from there and I'll be right back. Okay. See you, Norgorot. Have a good one. So this is the the nine millimeter belt version. Longer slots here. I don't know how that would imagine. Yeah, that's the same piece. I don't know what actual differences there are outside of this piece. Is this the only one that's different, Vitaly? But the key thing is He's grabbing some. And it's got wider little belt clamps. It is everything else is the same. Okay. I'm going to drop this into here then. Right there. So I can grab these four millimeter, teeny tiny four millimeter screws. This is an area where it's important, so the other ones I think were fine at the other sizes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I found it. I did not lose it, but I dropped it. on the end of the screw. Paper towel. Nero would have never found it. <laughs> there are many screws here on the floor that I'm, I will find one day. Nero Q, how are you? I need to go go get a brewski. When are we gonna do that? When's our next brewery stop? Pathetic Puma, thanks for being a member. We have to leave early. No, we're we're not too far from from done here. They're shipping your magneto, awesome. I did not make the this aluminum stuff. This was made by Vitali here in, in chat. Okay, so there, there, there. What's the sensor you're going to use? This, um, it's a five to 24 volt. I think it's probably an LDO, but I don't know. I didn't look at it close. There we go. Solid. Italian chat made it. There's some good brews for Collins. 
No idea. Open source CAD makes a lot of difference for me. Yes. <coughs> okay, that goes there. And then these screws on the back of it, back side of it. Probably get the best view just right here. Back here are those those magnets. So if I slip in here, if I loosen this, it should just move up. Oh, it's already touching. Okay. Let's see. Okay. It's moving up and down. See that screw moving up and down? So it's attached to the to the magnet, which is good. Yep, that just moved up to, to go against the magnet. I'm gonna kind of hold this down and slowly tighten that. I don't want it to rotate as I'm tightening it. So that's the same process that you do on a <clears throat> on a printed tap. Just make sure that those are touching. Sometime in March for sure we'll get some brew. Delicious coffee porter. I want more. Where where was the coffee porter? Okay. Um here. Let me check something here. So for this tap here, if I paste this link again, and I think a link is in the description, maybe not. But if we go there, if you go to that GitHub, there is the um, where to buy links on there. Oh yeah, well, I'm in Sacramento. Kings fan, yes. I was really, really into <clears throat> watching them in the early 2000s uh, when I moved down here. But I don't spend a lot of time watching basketball or any sports anymore. Frost, Frost Beer Hall? Hmm. Okay, that is done. So what else do we have here? So now this... The extruder will bolt onto the top there. That will plug into the tool head board. It's kind of satisfying. I don't know if that's coming through. <laughs> yeah, so we are belted up. We have things moving well. Um, something we should check. Let's see if I can get this. Let's see if I can get some angles here from the camera. Oh yeah, there we go. That's actually pretty nice. Let's see if we can raise just a little bit. There we are. So our goal here is to have that belt be right in the middle between on that pulley. And we, in, in testing this, we should probably make sure that the gantry's at about the same height. I mean, it's level around. We still have our stops in the rails that are kind of helping to ensure that. So. So hear me out, tap for homing and auto Z, but beacon for meshing. Sure. Fabrico would probably sell a lot of your tap kits. So now if we move this, can we move? There we go. So that means that the pulley there needs to go down a little bit. And it's deciding not to focus on that anymore. There we go. <laughs> um, 
So let me get the, the, there. Probably sneak in here, a screwdriver. Now I haven't actually um, Loctited these grub screws either. I did get brand new um, pulleys for this. If I go in here and just kind of go in here, move this down just a hair. See if I am. I'm actually not getting to it because I'm not watching what I'm doing. There we go. And that's probably too much, but I'm going to tighten this up and now we're going to move it again. Get some, some focus maybe. There we are. And I thought it was too much, but that's really good. And when it moves, apparently it screws up the focus, but now you see where we're, we're at our goal here of an equal amount of pulley showing below the belt and above the belt, right? So that's important so that your belt isn't catching on the edges of that, of that, um, of the pulley flanges. So, okay. That belt clamp for Z has, has a lot of bend in it. Oh, it sure does. It sure does. <laughs> I never noticed that. It's fine. That's fine. It's located by the edge of the that. <laughs> so this is really important. And, and you see a lot of belt wear on the edges of your belts here um, in some builds. Some of that can be because if this is if this is not aligned, then it's gonna force a misalignment all the way through um, and into the the front idlers. Same thing is you want to make sure that the where your pulley is coming through uh, around your XY joints is lined up. So just making sure that everything in the whole belt path is lined up. This is your your easiest adjustment is where the pulleys are. So on a Trident, you're really making sure besides other reasons, you want to make sure that your Y extrusion here is exactly um, level two, it's really the bottom, the, the bottom of your, um, of your printer, but that all of your, um, Y, um, extrusions here on this side are parallel to each other and the same height to either side. If Nighthawk manages to do the USB hub on the second tool board. So, um, let's see where I am on the other, the other pulley. This thing can come off of here. Not getting as much light over here as I was on that. That one's a little high. I know it's hard to see. Cause there's not enough, there's not as much light good into that one as this one. It's, it's being blocked by the top of the pulley. There's more gap in the top on the other side. Um, but I'm looking and it looks like the pulley needs to go down a little bit. Curious about using nine millimeter pulleys instead to give more room for wander. Probably not needed if done correctly. Yeah. There's enough space there. You're, you're, it shouldn't wander. If it's wandering, then there's something out of alignment in the system. So, so now the idea on this one is, I'm just trying to find that, is that needs to go down just a hair. Reach in here. I'm gonna try to feel goes down like that move it around to settle it in place and I'll get a better look at this later because I think I went a little too far down 
but I just don't have enough light to see it right now. Does anyone have a bed mesh in their start print macro? I run a bed mesh every print. I run a bed mesh every print. I have a very terrible um, habit of starting my printer preheating and forgetting about it. So my preheat times vary widely. <laughs> Usually once I've let it preheat for long enough, it's really quick to get to it to, to the printing point. But the amount of time that I let it sit there and preheat varies significantly. So what is next on this? So gantry's done. We can get the tool head on. So next stream, we'll get the tool head um, assembled and put on the printer, get the Nighthawk board. So we have the Nighthawks board and that's the board itself. And we'll go through this whole, this whole thing, but we'll get this on the, on the Galileo two here. I'm not going to cover on stream. I'm just going to build up the stealth burner off stream. Um, I don't think that's worth dealing or doing on camera, taking the time to do it. So I'll do this in between streams. So then, and the, and the, the tool head, I'll get it assembled in between streams and then we'll just get it on there, run the umbilical for the tool head. And that's something I want, we can check here before we, before we call it is someone was saying they couldn't get the, this to work with a PG seven. And if that's the case, we might have fun. And it is rather thick cable. So I, I'm not surprised actually. So we've got cable here. There is a lot of it. <laughs> Now we will have to deep in this for sure to get this through, but I have a feeling that that is going to be too large. Let's just do some measuring even. Will that even fit through there? Some rough measurements here. So that's about 6.75 millimeters inner diameter on that. Well, it's, it, 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 if we can get it to work, it'll be close. Um, yep, we did the drawing today. We do that at the two hour mark. So we're about 45 minutes past the, the drawing time. Oh, I'm stepping. So that will physically fit through this part of it. That doesn't mean that it'll fit through here, but we might be able to trim that so that it does. We might be able to trim that so that it does. There is a rubber gasket in there, but we might, so we might have to forego that. Okay, there's a little, little rubber gasket in there. I think if this is tight enough, it's going to hold on just fine, I think. And I don't, this is a, I think it'll be fine. Would you rather a 400? Core XY or a 300 Core XY? I'd rather a 250 Core XY. <laughs> I like small printers. Okay. This is just kind of planning. So we'll take note of the pins, pin um, locations, and depin this with our fancy depinning tool. And then put this through here and see if we can get it all to, to clamp down. Um, the drawing is at two hours. Yep. The, what else? I think that's about it. We are, it's using five of the pins. It's a six pin, but it's using five of the pins. And I think two of them are ground. So I think there's a shield grounding from the shield 
ground 24 volts and then the um, data lines for USB. So the, the sixth pin is unpopulated. Okay, so I think that is it. We are at two hours and 47 minutes. This, um, yeah, it's USB, not can. This Saturday, we're gonna continue this build with my super fancy new license plate and tail lights. It's got a motor in it. Uh, we will be working on suspension. So this Saturday will be suspension. And I very seriously doubt we're gonna finish this this Saturday. So we'll probably do two streams, two Charlie's Angel streams in, in March. So there were a bunch of new members here today. So keep an eye out for that stream coming up. Um, if you got a membership today and it's the first time, you have access to the previous um, streams on that. So check it out. Um, then Sunday we'll be back on the Milo build. So. From that, see you, Derek. Thanks for being here. Um, thanks, everyone. Uh, Bearded Bucket, thanks for gifted memberships. This end of stream gifted memberships appreciated, especially those that are still around. Um, thanks to Polymaker for Fulfillment Giveaway. Thanks for all the gifted memberships. Anybody who became a member, thank you, Derek, for the gifted membership. Um, we will see you hopefully on Saturday, especially these new members. Uh, take care, everyone. I hope you have a good week. Um, enjoy the build. <laughs> Bye.